The Mountain. A towering mammoth of raw power and brutality has struck fear into the hearts of many. His imposing presence and unmatched strength have made him one of the most formidable adversaries in the realm of fiction. But is there anyone out there capable of standing toe to toe with this fearsome juggernaut? Today on Fantasy Archive, we explore contenders from various corners of fictional universe, each armed with their own unique skills, abilities, and feats that make them worthy opponents. Stay tuned, the mountain might be a Goliath, but these Davids are ready to take him down. Used to be you couldn't look at me. That was a long time ago. Our first contender is none other than the Hound, also known as Sandor Clegane, the mountain's baby brother. And let's just say they don't exchange holiday cards. This deep-seated dislike gives Sandor a big mental boost. But the Hound isn't just about family drama. He's an impressive fighter, much like his big bro, and he's a huge dude. While he might not lift mountains like the mountain, Sandor made a smart choice. He decided to trade some of his raw muscle for something even better, top-notch fighting skills and clever tactics. So he got both brains and brawn in the same heavyweight class as the mountain. When it comes to size, Sandor can handle the toughest challenges. Their feud gets even darker because Sandor is convinced that his brother killed their sister and father, whose deaths were called a hunting accident. This belief fuels his strong desire to get back at the mountain. He got fed up with the idea of knighthood when he watched his dishonorable brother get knighted by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. He started hating the romanticized stories and songs that paint knights and wars as noble and glorious when in reality many so-called honorable knights harm innocent people while chasing fame. Interestingly, he became a member of the King's Guard without being knighted or taking any vows, which is quite unusual. During the showdown between the Clegane brothers and the Hands of Tony, we get a glimpse of how they would face each other. Gregor's furious rage was on full display, and it only stopped when King Robert Baratheon ordered them to quit. With a masterful display of swordsmanship and an indomitable spirit, this warrior has faced down the mountain fearlessly already, proving time and again why he is a force to be reckoned with. His patience and determination for revenge make him an interesting choice to face the mountain. If destiny brings them together again, you can bet it'll be a battle worth watching. Arthur Dane the mountain's primary weakness lies in facing a disciplined and skilled adversary. This was evident when Oberyn Martell, though not physically as powerful as the mountain, used his speed, discipline, and spear skills to taunt and defeat him, at least temporarily. Arthur Dane has a remarkable track record, demonstrated by his ability to defeat opponents like the Smiling Knight without a scratch despite the Smiling Knight being described as exceptionally fast and agile. Arthur, along with another Kingsguard member, Sir Oswell Wendt, might have been involved in the kidnapping of Lyanna Stark near Harrenhal. This event marked the start of Robert's Rebellion. After the Rebellion, Lord Eddard Stark found Arthur, Sir Oswell Wendt, and Sir Geralt Tytower at the Tower of Joy. Arthur died during the fight, facing off against Eddard and his group. The exact details of his death aren't clear, but history records that Eddard killed him in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Bran Stark remembers his father saying Arthur was the best knight he'd ever seen, and thought Arthur would have won if not for Howland Reed's help. So while the mountain has an advantage in size and armor, Arthur Dane's skill and weapon Dawn levels the playing field and might even tilt it to his favor. Dawn is forged from a fallen star, possessing the extraordinary ability to cut through armor effortlessly. This unique advantage would nullify the mountain's usual armor advantage, making the battle a formidable challenge for him. According to George R. R. Martin, in a normal sword fight, Sir Barastian Selmy and Arthur Dane were equally skilled. But if Arthur used his special sword Dawn, he would have an advantage over Barristan. Arthur proved his fighting abilities by winning a tournament celebrating Viserys' birth, where he defeated Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. Sir Arthur Dane, the sword of the morning. Our third contender not only pays his debt, but has a hand of gold. Jaime Lannister before he lost his right hand, of course. Prior to this, everyone in Westeros recognized him as one of the best swordsmen around. Even his enemies had to admit he had some serious skill with a sword. He was quick, precise, and made sword fighting look like an art form. Back in his prime, he didn't shy away from tough fights. One of his most memorable opponents was the Smiling Knight, a famous swordsman who was somewhat similar to the Mountain in terms of reputation. They had a major showdown, and Jamie not only displayed his swordsmanship, but also his quick thinking and resilience. 
Despite the Smiling Knight's fame, Jamie managed to hold his own and walk away alive. There are no men like me. Only me. But let's get real here. If Jamie challenges the mountain with just one hand, it would be like challenging him to a thumb wrestling match and hoping for a miracle. I'm going to open your lord from balls to brains and see what Starks are made of. You killed me. My father once told me you were the best he'd ever seen. I never knew the man to be wrong about matters of combat. Prepare to meet our fourth contender, has had extensive experience in battle and duels. He was the commander of the King's Guard. Until he was relieved of his duties, Barristan Selmy. Especially during his prime, Sir Barristan Selmy was one of the most accomplished swordsmen of his time and held the distinction of being one of the greatest knights in history. His remarkable skill and service as the Lord Commander of the King's Guard for an extended period further solidified his reputation. When it comes to sword fighting, Barristan Selmy is a notch above Oberyn Martell, who has almost beat the mountain. If Barristan can land a strong hit early on in a fight, he has a good chance of winning. But if he can't do that, the mountain's incredible strength and stamina might wear him out. Some stories that might not be part of the main tale, but still hold some truth, say he was just as good as Sir Arthur Dane, the legendary knight known as the Sword of the Morning. In one-on-one -on -one combat, Barristan proved his mettle by defeating Sir Simon Toyne, a formidable opponent. And at a massive tournament held at Storm's End, he went head-to-head -head with Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, the heir to the throne. And yes, Barristan won the whole tournament, defeating the best knights of the realm. And that's why everyone talks about Barristan Selmy as one of the greatest swordsmen to ever grace the Seven Kingdoms. So, when it comes to the art of sword fighting, Barristan Selmy is a name you don't want to underestimate. When Barristan Selmy, at the height of his abilities, faces off against the mountain, it's like a match where Barristan is likely to win. You heard the hand, the king's too fat for his armor. Go find the breastplate stretcher, now! Last but not least, our final contender, the formidable Robert Baratheon in his prime. In his heyday, he would have been a worthy contender for the mountain. Robert was as strong as an ox and fearless in battle. He loved to clash swords and saw poison as a cowardly choice. In his youth, Robert was an unmatched warrior. He wielded a spiked iron warhammer, specially crafted for him by Donald Roy at Storm's End. He also carried a blade, but preferred close combat. He wore a distinctive helmet adorned with antlers, giving him the appearance of a horned god. Robert favored melees over jousts because he could use his hammer to devastating effect. Despite the many weapons available, Robert mostly used a hunting knife given to him by John Arryn, his foster father, when he was a boy. Even as he gained weight and indulged in drinking, Robert retained his remarkable strength, leading Jamie Lannister to believe that Robert was stronger than him. Sure, Gregor Clegan was a fearsome figure in Westeros, and his strength and size alone doesn't make him a supremely skilled warrior. Robert, on the other hand, was widely recognized as one of the realm's greatest fighters. His Warhammer was a formidable weapon that could easily crush through armor, shattering bones upon impact. The Mountain relied heavily on intimidation rather than true combat skill. While he terrorized villages and abused peasants, he rarely faced a true warrior in combat. Robert, being a far more dangerous warrior than Oberyn, and with a weapon perfectly suited for taking down someone like Gregor, could have bested him. I am the brother of Elia Martel, and you know why I've come all the way to this stinking shit pile of a city? And lastly, an honorable mention, the fighter who actually beat Sir Gregor Clegane, Oberyn Martell. In our view, he defeated the mountain, but he was overconfident, causing his unforeseen death. But the mountain had been defeated. If they had a chance for a rematch, Oberyn would likely come out on top. Oberyn had Gregor pinned and could have ended the fight at any moment. However, he wanted a confession from Gregor, so he delayed and this delay gave Gregor an opportunity to surprise him and kill him. But if Oberyn had struck decisively when he could have, Gregor would have been killed and Oberyn would have won. It's clear Oberyn understood his own skills and strategy, but a moment of hesitation cost him the victory. Oberyn believed he could defeat the mountain because, in reality, he could. However, just thinking you can defeat someone and knowing you will defeat them are two different things. Oberyn was cautious and had a backup plan. 
He applied poison to his weapon, so even if he lost, the poison would ultimately bring down Gregor. He was prepared for all possible outcomes, showing his strategic thinking in the fight. Of course, these are just our thoughts, and if you have any ideas about who might have been the best chance to beat the mountain, please feel free to share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear who you think could beat the mountain.